Welcome everybody to Forza Motorsport 6 and today we're taking a look at the Top Gear car pack. Now this may well very be the last car pack for Forza Motorsport 6 which is a bit sad but I think they might well have gone out on a high because there are seven great cars in this car pack and even though some people might be a bit sad that there aren't any race cars in there well not any race cars that you might expect there are seven great cars nonetheless and seven of them that quite frankly I wasn't really expecting but I'm glad they're all in nonetheless and the first is the 2016 Audi R8 V10 Plus now this is 610 horsepower 413 pounds feet of torque from its 5.2 litre V10 engine weighing 3428 pounds so that's more power and less weight than the uh, 2013 Audi R8 that is on this game so it's obviously going to be a lot faster and better in terms of handling so yeah, we're going to take this out onto the track and see what it can do. Right, we're at Laguna Seca, one lap, which is what I do with all these car packs. I take a few of the cars out of the seven and uh, take them around for one lap, just to give you a hint of how they are. This car, along with all the other six, will get a review of their own. Because unlike most car packs where they at least have one or two uh, race cars, this technically has none one you could say sort of is, but yeah, they all have plenty to talk about with them, so they will all get a review eventually. Yeah, this Audi, as I said before, it's got more power and less weight than previous R8s, so yeah, as you'd expect, it's quicker and better in terms of handling. I also somewhat like the looks of it, never been a massive fan of the R8, and I'm not a massive fan of this one either, but I think it does look pretty good, especially from the rear. I'm not a massive fan of the grille at the front, but yeah, it looks pretty decent nonetheless. And it's got a fixed spoiler as well, as you can see. It's not something that rises up at a certain speed limit. So yeah, no more getting into trouble with the police with that thing. <laughs> Sounds great as well. I've always admired Audi for going with a V10 for this after the V8 version. This one sounds bloody brilliant. And the fact they haven't gone with turbo charges either is even more surprising. I would have expected them to have done so by now, especially since this is the 2016 version. But maybe that's on the cards for the next one. Oopsie daisy. It's not completely uh, idiot proof though, as you saw there. <laughs> Yeah, still sounds great, drives great, and is what you'd expect from a uh, car that's been going on for a few years now, so yeah, it's no surprise that it's even at the top of its game right now. So yeah, we're going to move on and take a look at the next car. And this is the next car, the 2015 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat. Now this has the exact same engine as the Challenger Hellcat. So 707 horsepower, 650 pounds feet of torque from its 6.2 litre V8, which is supercharged, weighing 4,575 pounds. Now that is heavier than the uh, Challenger, but it apparently is quicker in terms of acceleration and top speed, though slightly worse in terms of handling. But yeah, really, really glad they put this in because I've never really been a fan of the saloon version of the Charger, but now I definitely am with that um, engine in it and these looks. So yeah, really, really glad that they put it in. And the next car. 2014 Ferrari FXXK. So this is basically an upgraded version of the uh, the Ferrari, which, considering how great that car is, this is going to be even better. And as you can see from the acceleration speed, it's great, and handling and braking wise, it's even better. And yeah, 1,036 horsepower, 664 pounds feet of torque, weighing 2,831 pounds, and it gets all that power from its 6.3 litre V12 engine. So yeah, it's even lighter than the Ferrari and has more than 100 horsepower more. So as you can predict, it's obviously quicker. So let's uh, take this out onto the track and see what it can do. Alright, we're at Monza. Um, like the Audi, we're going to take this around for one lap, see what it can do briefly. But like I said, it will get a review of its own. And you can see stylistically wise alone, it is different to the uh, LaFerrari. Still sound brilliant as well. I'm still getting used to the handling of this car because 
quite not used to her, because even though the, Fer the Ferrari is a great handling car, this is way, 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 way better. Handles more like a race car, which is why I said there was sort of one that is like a race car. Because this handles like no road car I know of. This brakes are fantastic. Obviously I can brake later than that, I just don't want to crash it through a chancing it, because I've not really driven this car. See, it can go wrong. So yeah, this is a car that still bites, and considering how uh, well, the Ferrari was hardly a tameable beast, it's having way more powers on top of the fact that it weighs less. Makes this a bit more difficult on occasions despite how uh, much downforce it produces. The faster you go, the better handling it is. And this car can go pretty damn fast. Also still sounds glorious as well. Can't really beat a Ferrari V12, modern or classic, as far as I'm concerned. Speed! I love the way those are rear tips look as well. Really does look a unique car, even more so than the Ferrari did. So, yeah. That's the second of three cars that we're going to be uh, taking around for a uh, lap. So let's move on to the next car. And this is the next car, the 2016 Jaguar F-Type Project 7. So this has a uh, 5 litre V8 engine, producing 567 horsepower, 516 pounds feet of torque, weighing 3,571 pounds. So yeah, this is basically a race inspired version of the normal F-Type as it has a D-type inspired rear lump at the back behind the driver and it also has those race liveries on it but as you can see compared to the normal left type it's also slightly more powerful by six, 17 more horsepower and it actually weighs less as well so it's a faster car, better handling car and it still has that amazing sounding V8 now moving on to the next car is another Jaguar the 1990 Jaguar XJS now this has 299 horsepower, 318 pounds feet of torque from its 5.4 litre V12 engine weighing 3,968 pounds. Now I am so glad that they put this in the game because as you can see, pre-2000 Jaguars aren't all that common. The only other 90s one we've had is the XJ220. So I am so so glad that they've put this car in. Plus it's also been a favourite that's been on Top Gear a couple of times and yeah. It's been a car that I've been hoping to be playing on a game, and uh, I'm glad to finally put it in it. Now, moving on to the next car. The 2015 Land Rover Range Rover Sport SVR. Now, this has 550 horsepower, 502 pounds feet of torque from the Jaguar derived 5 litre V8, the exact same engine out of the F Type, the uh, standard version, weighing 5,148 pounds. So, yeah, as you can see far more powerful than the normal uh, Range Rover torque and power wise and also weighs a lot less as well so it's faster and has better handling which is something that people have been tired about this Range Rover having great handling so I can't wait to drive this around to see what it's like and we're going to do that exactly now so uh, see you when we get on the track right, right Road Atlanta for if we're going to give an SUV that is apparently good in terms of handling we're going to give it a challenge and uh, we can also hear that engine in all its glory on that back straight. Oh, it sounds good. So yeah, the original Range Rover Supercharge had a good sounding engine, but putting the uh, F-Type engine in this is a work of genius, quite frankly. And judging from that first corner, it's going to be handling well as well. Even if I am struggling to see over the car. So 
So yeah, the fact that this can work off-road as well, even with all the uh, handling modifications and the extra power, is also a testament to the engineering in this car. I've always touted the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT as a kind of benchmark for a good handling, relatively powerful car, but with this having, what, 80 horsepower more, and weighing slightly less, and obviously being a more practical car to start with, and being a car that can go off-road better, I think this quite frankly trumps it, and if you've seen my review of that Jeep, you'll know how much I actually like that car. So for me to say that this car is better than it, just judging from this first lap, says quite a lot. It's quite quick as well, we're doing more than 140 there. So yeah, I can't really wait to review all these cars and certainly can't wait to review this one as well. I always find that gives me a greater appreciation for these kind of cars. Yeah, there we go. I really can say that that handles better than the standard version. The stats don't lie. So yeah, we're going to go take a look at the final car, and then I'll give you my uh, conclusions on the car pack. So see you when we get there. And this is the final car at the car pack. The 2016 Rolls Royce Dawn. So yeah, this is basically a Wraith with the uh, roof lopped off. With a few minor changes, of course, but... Yeah, 563 horsepower, 575 pounds feet of torque from its 6.6 .6 litre V12 engine, weighing 5,644 pounds. So yeah, I'm again glad that they put this kind of car in because this is only the second Rolls Royce we've ever had in the uh, Forza Motorsport series, and this is only only Rolls Royce's third proper convertible they've made for how many several decades. So yeah, to have this in is quite special, and yeah. Really, really glad to put it in. I can't wait to review this as well. So yeah, if you paid attention, you'll have noticed that none of these cars have an engine smaller than a V8. The smallest engine being a 5 litre V8, which kind of is a testament to being a Top Gear car pack, that's for sure. And yeah, I, uh, for the first time ever, I really like every car that they've put in. Normally, they put, like I said before, they put a couple of race cars in, and even though I can respect them, they're never something I really come back to. But all seven of these are cars that are, on the whole, road cars. And I know that Ferrari's somewhat of a track car, but yeah, on the whole, they are kind of road cars. And that's really unusual, because like I said, they most sometimes put race cars in as well. So yeah, they really have gone out on a high if this is the final car pack. And I highly recommend it, because it's only like £5.50 or regional equivalent. So it's not really all that much at all for seven cars that are, quite frankly, cracking. And, again, they are all new to the series. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.